Let's continue with the next newer protocol, Quick. While multipath TCP was basically pushed forward by researchers, Quick was pushed forward by industry, mainly Google. So what is the main motivation for Quick? Well, maybe you remember we had the problem of multiplexing. What does it mean? When you look at a web page, in this example here from the New York Times, you have different elements. Pictures, headlines, text, whatever. And typically, you try to get these different content, like the pictures and the text, from different servers, for example. Maybe there's even advertisement or from the same servers, but as fast as possible to display it so that the user has a good experience, a good user experience by, well, seeing what the whole page almost immediately. The problem is, for the viewer, it doesn't matter if you first see this New York Times part and then this picture and then maybe some other part, then this one. So the order doesn't matter. But if we use a single TCP connection, then we may have a problem we discussed already in the context of HTTP, the head of line blocking. And we'll come back to this on the next slides. So HTTP, the older versions, we had some pipelining, but the responses there have to be kept in a certain order. HTTP 2, we saw we can do some multiplexing, but the responses can arrive in any order. But the problem is, if we use the same TCP connection, we may have a problem. Think of the transport layer. So if we have a single virtual pipe, a TCP pipe, then what happens? Well, you put all your data for the web page into segments for TCP, so nice. But TCP doesn't know anything about the semantics of the web page, doesn't know about that, for example, here doesn't matter the order in which you display the different pictures. So what happens if you drop a part, let's say, data for one of the pictures, like this one, then TCP thinks this is a byte stream and I will not deliver the parts that arrive later on the receiver side. I first have to fill the gap. But that means before I do not deliver in this example the data for this picture, I will not see this one, maybe not the headline, maybe not this one, but we have to wait. Not a good user experience. Would be much better to say, okay, why not displaying all these different parts? Okay, then maybe we still have a gap here, but this is then displayed later. Much better user experience. So recap, when we look at the HTTP and multiplexing, I explained many chapters ago that the original HTTP, we really had a single TCP connection for each HTTP GET request and response. So then the next GET and response, so for example, the index, some content, styles, some pictures, each individual TCP connections. That's old. We are beyond that. HTTP 1.1, we saw that we had different versions, no pipeline, request pipelining. So here we could at least send several GET requests and then we had to receive in order all the responses. For HP 2, we had the full pipelining. That means that we can send GET requests and the responses, they don't have to be in the same order. Problem solved. Well, yes, from the level of HTTP, it's solved, but no, when we look at TCP. So in this example shows that, okay, um, we may mix the answers, but what happens from the TCP perspective? TCP tries to deliver everything in order. HTTP typically runs over TCP and we know that, well, if we lose a packet, then we have to wait for a successful retransmission. We cannot deliver parts of the stream to the application. So, hmm, 
that was a problem of TCP. One simple solution would be uh, run HTTP over UDP. Okay, then with UDP we don't have head of line blocking. With UDP we can simply deliver all data as it arrives. But UDP, what about reliability? What about congestion control? What about all the other features like not flooding the receiver, etc., flow control? We learned all this about TCP. So yes, using UDP would solve head of, the line, head of line blocking, but not all the other things. So we have to do a bit there as well. But you see, TCP is a problem when it comes to web pages. Yet another motivation, that surveillance. We know that we can easily look into the traffic as long as the traffic is not encrypted. There's even an RFC about this stating that pervasive monitoring is an attack. It's a technical attack that should be mitigated in the design of the protocols where pos uh, possible. So the design of the protocols should be made in a way that it's not that easy to look into the content. So if we look at this issue, for example, checking, okay, what do we really, really need when it comes to transmitting data in the internet? So we learned that, okay, with our layer three, with our layer four, okay, to really forward data All we need in the end is source address, destination address, that's important, source port, destination port, that's something um, we need to perform demultiplexing, forwarding the data, we may need some more. So let's say, okay, IP header a bit more, but we don't have to look in the details. So mm, maybe we try to reveal only just a bit of the connection, minimal metadata. So um, that's an idea. So why not designing a protocol that hides major parts? So yes, we need some parts, we need something for forwarding, we need something for multiplexing, demultiplexing, but we don't have to reveal everything in transit, in the network. But wait, what about the middle boxes? The middle boxes are a problem. So, um, okay, so maybe we invent something that tries to, well, work with the, what's available in the network so that we can forward the packets, that we can do the multiplexing, um, but not revealing everything. So let's invent something that reduces the problem of this ossification. We can only use TCP and UDP and still tries to hide parks. Well, encrypt parts of our data stream to make it at least a bit harder to eavesdrop, to listen into the data stream. But we know that we cannot simply change everything on layer 4 because we have the middle boxes. So it must look like either TCP or UDP, but we know TCP is a problem. So what's left? Well, then use the UDP. UDP, we don't have the problems when it comes to web traffic uh, TCP has. So why not using UDP and hiding some parts? Yes, this works so we can be a bit more flexible if we use UDP and then do something on top that reduces a bit this ossification as I will show but as I will also show this is a challenge for the providers if you have middle boxes etc and you cannot look into the packets this may create problems but these were some of the two major motivations for the development of quick so security do not reveal everything and more flexibility, avoiding, for example, head of line blocking. So quick, initially called quick UDP internet connection. So using UDP, but still connection oriented. Today, it's just the acronym. And the idea was, well, 
the deployment should be easy. So this is why it looks like UDP. Well, it uses UDP. So from an internet middlebox perspective, this is UDP traffic. UDP we know how to handle. It's UDP. Then we need some fast, low latency connection setup. So if possible, no three-way handshake uh, plus um, handshakes for security, etc., which takes long because of the round trip times. Okay, multi-streaming independent streams. Ah, okay, this is, we don't uh, want to have this head of line blocking. Remember, maybe this picture and this picture and uh, this text independent of each other uh, displayed on the page. Security will at least integrate something like TLS, more efficient, multipath, resilience, load balancing. So maybe integrate everything that has been learned. Remember multipath, TCP, and there were also some other protocols, especially SCTP. I will come back to this in the next subsection where quick learned parts of it. So parts of the solutions, they were already there. They were borrowed from TCP, congestion control, from TLS, the security part, from SCTP, parts for this uh, streaming, etc. So how does it look like? Well, TCP is not just another refinement. Uh, the quick is not just another refinement of TCP. TCP is different. You saw in this timeline that over more than 20 years, many tried to refine TCP. Now quick is really, it's a different communication model. So in TCP, remember, yes, we are end to end. Okay, that's the transport layer with reliability, sequences, all this flow congestion control. We are bi-directional, full duplex. We are byte stream oriented. What does it mean? Byte stream oriented? TCP does not know anything about the application behavior. And if an application writes some bytes, TCP may or may not then further transport uh, uh, the data then to the receiving application. So maybe TCP collects several bytes and then forwards it as a segment. So the sender may write data blocks and receiver may read in a single operation. So you could use something like urgent data and TCP to at least structure a bit because urgent data forces the receiver then to deliver data so you could send the segment with urgent data uh, each time and then you preserve a bit the application behavior, um, you sync then sender and receiver, but usually not. So TCP is agnostic when it comes to the behavior of the application. We know we have the three-way handshake, which is nice. We know why we need it, but it takes some time. So, and uh, we can use transport layer security for security, but that's another three-way handshake. Whew. Okay, that takes some time. And there's a nice uh, comparison uh, while well, that's showing you what is really the difference that's pointed to this. So, quick, the idea is, well, it's not we do not play with TCP and try to tweak it. We go for UDP. So, you see on the right-hand side, that quick uses UDP. As I said, big advantage, the network knows UDP, okay, and knows how to handle UDP. We learned if we tweak TCP too much, the middle boxes have some problems. Because then the middle box says, uh, no, 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 this is not the TCP anymore. Sometimes options are a problem, they are not an option, and so on, and so on. So the idea is here, okay, and I will go into the details. We want to improve the performance, faster setup. Yeah, UDP is much faster. Sure, I mean, there's no three-way handshake. And by using UDP, we can use the UDP that is in the kernel of our operating system. And then in user space, we can implement whatever we want. This gives us much more flexibility. So this avoids this 
TCP ossification because we, we just use the UDP. That's fine. The kernel knows how to handle it. All the middle boxes know how to handle it. And on top of that, I implement my new fancy ideas. So basically, from a network, if we simplify this, from network, it's a bidirectional UDP packet sequence. And the payload is concealed. So you have a UDP packet stream in two directions, and that's all you see. So quick runs over UDP encrypts the payload and the control data. And as we are in the user space, we can now do all the things we want. For example, have fancy congestion control mechanisms, if we like. Different loss recovery. We have all the security in there. We can do something like multi-streaming support, etc. And that's the idea. It's simpler, it's faster to update, and the application can now control transport service. If this is always a good idea, that's a different question, but it gives you a certain flexibility. All the other approaches, trying to tweak TCP, well, that's a problem because, especially the middle boxes, expect certain structure of TCP. And if you come up with yet another cool layer 4 protocol, that's not supported with the problem of, ah, uh, yeah, operating system doesn't support, middle box doesn't like, so hmm, that's it. And you saw with multipath TCP, we stayed with TCP from network perspective, many TCP flows, but it's TCP, and we only changed something in the end systems. And here, it's similar. We need the quick protocol, but only in the end systems, not anywhere else. And we don't have to change anything on kernel level. If we don't want to, we use UDP. That's the idea. And we integrate the TLS and the multi-streaming and all these things. And that was basically, finally, the idea that then led to, okay, let's call this our HTTP 3, the newest version, using this quick. So how does this look like and why is this faster? Well, in quick, we have different terms. I uh, used a bit different um, when you are looking how they're used in this context. So we have connections. Connections that sound similar to, to TCP, but that's it's a bit different. So connections, they're identified by a pair of identifiers, one for each endpoint. So the endpoint can pick an identifier and tell, okay, that's my identifier on my side, and this is what I call this connection. Great. And this, and that's important, is the persistent identity for the connection. And this is independent of whatever happens at the lower layers. So if you change ports, if you change IP addresses, etc. So this even helps surviving for the connection if you have changes due to net boxes, if you change the link layer, if you go from Wi-Fi to cellular, and whatever. So that's one thing. So we have connections. Connections, they live a bit longer and they have an identifier. The next thing, I mentioned this already, we try to reduce the round trip times we need. And the idea was, let's merge the three-way handshakes of TCP and TLS. Because first there was TCP. Many years later, someone said, we need security secure socket layer and so on, and then TLS 1.3. But this was always thought on top of TCP. So first, we set up the TCP connection. That's one round trip time. Then we send acknowledgement with a client hello that can go together uh, TLS. But we have a second round trip time here before we then can send this client finish and can send encrypted data. Two round trip times in quick, because it's integrated and we always can use security, we combine this. We also have a three-way handshake, but we send this initial client hello and get the answer with the initial and server hello. And this is our one round trip time. And then client finished and we can send data. So we save one round trip time. 
So that's a big advantage. One round trip time less. And that really speeds up everything. Because today, most of our com uh, communication is encrypted. So we always have these two round trip times. Okay, that's the idea how to save one round trip time. And a connection, as I said, identified by a pair of IDs, one for each endpoint. But now where do we have our streams and uh, all these things? Well, here you see an overview of the idea how to structure the flow of data. So we have a client and a server. It goes in both directions, bidirectional. And you see our connection. So the connection identified here by a certain identifier given, for example, by the client. And then we send something from the client to the server. That's the connection. But the connection itself may contain several streams. Okay, I will explain uh, this uh, in the next slides in some more detail. So, for example, here, this red stream, you see, the red stream, and from time to time, you send data in the red stream, so maybe here's also a bit of the red stream. And then we have the blue stream, the green stream, and the yellow stream. So these are the streams. And then you can take the streams, as we, we will see, the streams, and chop them into smaller parts, as you see them here. And then they are frames within something that's called a packet. I will come back to this. So we have streams. The streams can live a bit longer. You can set up a stream. You can tear down a stream. And the stream contains bytes, data. And you basically you fragment this stream of bytes into smaller parts, into frames. And you can transmit different frames together in a packet. That's the idea. All the packets, they have a packet number. As you can see here, packet number one and packet number two and packet number three and four and packet number five and so on. And each of the packet contains several, one or several frames. So there's packet number three has only one frame and that's data from stream two. Well, you can also have three frames or two frames or four frames, etc. Yes, I know a bit confusing, but I guess uh, after the next following three slides, it will be a bit clearer. So connection contains many packets. Packets contain frames and frames belong to streams. So what is a packet? Packets, packets are individual numbered a 62-bit number. And now this is different. There's no retransmission using the same number. If you retransmit, as I will explain, we use a new packet, new number. So the packets are shown here. So they structure the transmission. We have a certain packet. Within the packet, we have the frames, and the frames belong to certain streams. The whole connection is protected by encryption. So we don't need to set up individual encryption for individual streams. So the whole connection is already protected. So we have packets and we transmit them. And if we lose a packet, we have to retransmit, as we'll see, maybe not even the same packet but we have to use new sequence numbers. So in quick, you can easily distinguish original packets from retransmission. Why this is important, you will see. One or several packets may form the payload of a UDP datagram. So inside a UDP datagram, so UDP quite simple, uh, you have the header, which is a very simple he header, and you then have one or more packet 
in one datagram. So there's a certain minimum size assumed. We try to avoid any fragmentation and there's a special way to find out that the path can really transmit and forward the size of 1200 byte. <laughs> Simply the first packet has a size of 1200 byte. And if this is successful, everything is fine. So that's the idea. So the encryption, as I said, is for, well, valid for the whole connection, but we encrypt using the encryption setting, we encrypt individual packets. Why? So encryption based on individual packets. This helps a lot if you lose a packet you don't have to wait for retransmission. You can still decrypt all subsequent packets. Big advantage. So what about the acknowledgement? So the acknowledgement works as follows. The receiver acknowledges always the highest packet number received so far and tells me, gives me a list of receive contiguous packet number blocks and this tells the sender if there are gaps. So there are up to 256 number ranges per acknowledgement, TCP only has three. And so basically what you will get back is something telling me, okay, the highest number I got was this one. And then I got, uh, for example, from, I don't know, 3,500 up to 3,800. And I got something like 3,952 up to 4,212 and so on. So you will get a list um, what you actually received. That's a list of gaps. So the receiver then knows what happened. Okay, perfect. These are our packets. So several packets may be in a UDP datagram. For the network, it looks like a UDP packet. So now what are these streams? Because... These are the packets and maybe uh, several of these packets, they come together. Uh, this is then a UDP packet. So what about these streams and the, the frames? So the streams, the streams are within a connection. So your, each connection has at least one or more streams. So, and this is similar to a TCP byte stream and the application in this case can even say, okay, this is the more important, the less important stream, which is quite interesting. Even for a web page that you could say, okay, now for me, it's more important that you get the first the text and the picture, so whatever. Big advantage now is, although, yeah, similar to TCP byte stream, the establishment is very lightweight because the connection with this three-way handshake and setting up security already exists. So you have simple primitives, open, exchange data, and close. And this can be done within a single packet. So you just uh, open the data and close and uh, that's very simple. Because we have the security setting, it's all there. We don't need a three-way handshake. We have a stream identifier, and this includes some bits for identifying Who's the initiator? Is it bidirectional? Is it unidirectional, the stream? So that's the idea. So the stream may go on for a longer time and it's segmented into data frames. So that's the idea that if you send something, then you segment this into frames and we have a certain frame offset that's to, uh, similar to a TCP sequence number. And this is now used for in-order delivery, loss detection, retransmission, if required for the stream. So there could be streams where you do not need any uh, retransmission, then okay, uh, it's fine. So that's the, the idea of streams. So you may have a new stream or you may stop the stream and you fragment the content of the stream into frames. So you have different frames and one then packet inside the connection may contain one or more frames. So that's the idea. And the frames, finally, this is, well, something where you then transport the data. So the packet contains a sequence of frames. So you can see, okay, this is my 
packet and maybe you have not this example two packets and this is now my here my UDP packet and inside you have packet one and packet two and here you have a frame of stream 17 and a frame of stream 5 and the next one has again something from stream 5 and then something a frame of stream 2 and a fra uh, frame of stream 3 whatever so that's uh, was the idea okay there are 20 different frame types specified and they all have their type dependent data and the what type these frames have. So this is a bit similar to the flags in TCP. It's now given in these type fields and examples are we have padding frames and ping and acknowledgement frames and reset and so on and so on. An example shown here, an acknowledgement frame that tells you, okay, uh, a certain type. And as I said, there's a value for the large acknowledge. My example is most 4711. And uh, there's a certain ac ranges that's what i explained that to say okay everything is fine from 3500 to whatever so these ranges that's that's the idea and this would be then an egg frame i will go into the bits later when i show you a wireshark example so with this packet frame stream structure within one connection. Only the connection needs this one round trip time set up, which is already faster compared to classical TCP. Quick also offers recovery flow congestion control. So what happens if you lose a packet? Loss detection in Quick is based on packets, not on frames. So, if a packet is acknowledged, all the frames in the packet considered received. Remembered, we have the packet, and inside the packet, we had these frames for stream 17, another frame for stream 3, etc., 5, etc. So, that's fine. If we receive a packet, everything is fine. I mean, if you have a UDP packet, and that's the base for everything. If you lose this, then typically you lose several of these packets or at least one. So, but if we receive it, we act it, everything is nice. And then we know all the frames within this packet have been received. So what happens? Um, or when do we say a packet is lost? Well, if the packet is still unacknowledged, so we didn't get any ACK and a later sent packet is already ACKED. So if I see that I can ACK a packet that was sent later, then something went wrong. Okay, but I do not immediately react because otherwise the simplest reordering would create a, or cause a retransmission. Remember? We use UDP to carry everything. In UDP is basically IP plus some demultiplexing ports. So we know IP packets may be delayed, reordered, duplicated, etc. So that's one condition. So the first one. So we see that the later sent packet is act. But additionally, we have to meet a certain loss threshold. There are two, and one is that if a packet with a certain number X has been acknowledged, then we consider all unacknowledged packets less than X minus T, they are lost. And T is called the packet reordering threshold. So if you think of the packet numbers as a line, and we have X here, and then we say, okay, here we have T, this threshold, certain T, that's this distance, it's our T, 
then we consider all these packets here as lost and not the packets in between. So we have a certain window of the size T where we say within the window we can still, maybe we can still receive the packet and we can then reordering. So maybe yes, it's lost or maybe it's just delayed. Maybe it's just a larger delay. So we should not react too fast. And depending on the T, react, react earlier or later. So that's based on the number of the packet numbers. So this is the reordering threshold. And the second way of looking at that is to use the second threshold. And this is based on time. So if the time for the most recent acknowledgement is T, then again, same thing, but now we don't go via packet numbers, but via time. So we say, okay, we got this T and now we have a certain waiting time. So waiting time here, where we say, okay, that's the waiting time. And we say, okay, everything before that we considered lost. And within the waiting time, there's still the chance to receive it. And the waiting time is derived from a weighted estimated round trip time. So we can do this based on numbers or based on waiting times. So if we consider packets as lost, we know there were some frames in these lost packets. And now we take the lost frames only in the new packet if the stream requires so. So for example, if you say, I've got a real-time stream and if I lose something, it doesn't make any sense to retransmit this frame. It's too late anyway. So forget about the data. So there might be streams where you do not do any retransmission. But only for streams that need retransmission, you will place the frames of lost packets into a new packet. And so this is why I said we do not retransmit the identical packet we create a new one with maybe the same, but maybe also different content for the retransmission. So that's the idea. And then there's mechanisms similar to TCP receiver windows, uh, telling the sender the maximum amount of data. So there's some flow control integrated. There's also congestion control integrated. So uh, Quick follows similar rules like TCP. But you see the differences and the differences gives us much more flexibility when it comes to not only different priorities of streams, but also streams with different requirements. Some streams require retransmission, some other streams do not. So why retransmitting? If we use TCP, always TCP, well, uh, we, we always have to retransmit the data. Now think of a periodic update of some news on web pages. Hey, if you lose it, so what? So the stream doesn't have to be reliable. We don't need retransmission because we will get new data every, let's say, 10 seconds, for example, for a stock exchange ticker or something like this. That all sounds nice, but there are some open issues, hmm, as you can expect. Just some, some examples. Load balancers. We like these middle boxes. We need load balancers. Load balancers are quite important if you have an incoming data stream for web server farm. Let's say and you have uh, many web servers behind this. Then you have a load balancer. And the load balancer will say, OK, let's distribute the requests to different servers. And then the servers access their databases, etc. So but the load balancer typically checks, OK, that's my TCP protocol. And then I go for this quintuple of protocol and socket pair. Socket pair identifying my connection. Okay. And if I have a certain connection that accesses certain data and I mapped it to this server, for this connection, I always map to this server. So I do not balance the same connection to different servers. This helps a lot. 
because we have certain state in the servers, etc., etc., etc. So, hmm, what happens in case of quick? In quick, yes, we, we also have UDP. Great, perfect. Uh, so as a protocol, okay. Plus we have a socket pair, okay. But UDP is handled in a different way. For example, with NAT, NATs may change ports because also NAT boxes, they remember, okay, you set up a connection. I explained this in the context of NAT, that if we start a connection from inside my network across a NAT, the NAT stores state and stores the mapping so that when data comes back, soon, the soon ACK comes back, I know how to change the port and the IP address. This is not true for UDP. There is no connection from NAT perspective. So, the load balancer will fail. It doesn't work. So, typically, many parts of the infrastructure, they assume TCP for data streams and not UDP, but now Quick uses UDP. And so, this sometimes works and sometimes not. So this may or may not match at least today's internal optimizations in, for example, content delivery networks. Then encryption, there might be cases where you say, I don't want encryption. So um, in internal networks, private networks, uh, so then, well, uh, but encryption is incorporated there's also a way of switching this off but maybe this is not compatible with other implementations there are some issues there are some firewall issues because not all of them handle quick and uh, if you then read the documentation sometimes it's just written okay drop all the other traffic so udp tcp nice and drop everything else there are also sometimes some routers that was bit severe in former times some routers in case of overload they prefer dropping UDP but this still may happen and then performance uh, the, the key idea was well we want to be more flexible okay check we definitely are more flexible with quick and we want to handle this multi-streaming etc we want to integrate security check that's also but quick as the name implies should be also faster is it faster it depends, as always, it depends. So there are many different measurements. One uh, showed here. I said, okay, um, well, if we, and we have to compare TCP with TLS, if we have TLS um, over TCP, and then depending on the setting of quick, we are roughly in the same ballpark, so... 460 something a megabit per second for certain settings so that looks good but as i said it depends there's some more there's some more research and um, this example shows what happens if we compare quick with tcp and as soon as quick wins this is indicated in red so red indicates quick is faster and blue indicates TCP is faster. Blue is TCP. So depending on, for example, the object size, 5K up to 10 megabyte, and depending on the transmission speed, you see that here with 1% loss, it seems to be that quick is the clear winner. So quick wins. But if we, for example, go for the same varying object size here, the same transfer speeds here, but we have a certain a bit higher round trip time, 112 milliseconds. Now, uh, 112, oh, yeah, that's like, I mean, normal UMTS 3G mobile phone or across the Atlantic. And we have a certain chitter, which triggers packet reordering, you see. For larger objects, larger objects, TCP wins. And if we have on the lower line, second line, you see a varying number of objects with a certain loss, you see that depending on the setting, there are settings where TCP is 
the clear winner. So if we have uh, many objects, smaller objects with a certain round trip time, etc., etc., you see, it looks like, okay, it pretty much depends on this round trip time and the jitter. So quick, so far, and this depends on always on fine tuning, on the implementation, um, some more research, but so far it looks like that quick doesn't like jitter and a bit higher round trip time that much. But as I said, this will change over time. There will be some fine tuning. Remember, TCP had a lot of time since 1974, the early 80s, 40 years of improvement. And Quick is relatively new. Also, what is the throughput? Well, it depends on the implementation. This shows measurements, a comparison between Quick. You see here different Quick implementations, different quick implementations versus UDP and TCP. So maybe, uh, so maybe the problem, so you may think is, okay, quick uh, is running in user space and not in kernel space, but these measurements show that, well, UDP, that's not the bottleneck. So you place something on top of UDP and UDP goes up to almost 10 gigabit per second in this setting. Okay, uh, TCP is also 9.5, let's say 9.5 gigabit per second. That's quite fast. But you see the large differences between the slowest implementation of Quick at the time of this measurement, etc., and the fastest implementation. That's quite a lot. I mean, between 2.4 and 8.2 gigabit per second. So there's still still something to do so that quick is really quicker compared to TCP. But we always have to take into account uh, this includes encryption. So yes, TCP outperforms, absolutely, still. But that's already quite nice. You see different implementation from different vendors and also open source. So performance, as always, it depends. Still, it's a bit slower, but it depends on the setting. Plus, these are flows, single flows, and more long-term. So these are not short flows. So you see, that's different. The slide before I showed you many of these short-term flows. Then we know that Quick has to live together with TCP in the network. So what about fairness? It can be stated that Quick versus Quick is fair. Fair, that means fair sharing of bottleneck links. But as I can show you here, Quick is unfair when it comes to TCP. So Quick outperforms TCP in the network. On the left hand side, you see the throughput in megabit per second over time and when uh, using artificial bottleneck link of five megabit per second with certain round trip time and buffer size, as always, it depends on the setting. And yes, this may change over time, implementation, etc., etc. But you quite clearly see that uh, TCP stays here and it's not a fair sharing because you see that typically on average, Quick tends to get something like three, yeah, three point something, three point two, and uh, TCP only gets something like one point, let's say eight or two, or doesn't matter, uh, something like this. So, you see, that's not fair sharing. And also, if you look into more detail, so although we use similar congestion avoidance mechanisms. Quick seems to be a bit faster in adapting to the situation. So you see on the upper right hand graph, you see the concession window, how it develops in Quick and in TCP. And you see Quick has a larger concession window on average compared to TCP. And this is why you can send more. And uh, if you zoom into uh, the figure from above, you see that it seems to be that if something happens, quick ramps up a bit faster. So a bit more aggressive. 
And this is why in this case it wins. But as I said, this may change over time. Quick is quite uh, young and also the experience we all have with Quick are a bit younger. So please do have a look with Wireshark into Quick. Yes, it's used. And there you will see all the features and really how a Quick packet looks like. So I picked out here a packet uh, from one com server I just received at home. It says already as protocol quick. Uh, it says, okay, this, uh, this initial uh, packet and it tells you. Uh, so uh, what is the content? Ah, you see, these are my frames. You see packet numbers and you see frame acknowledgement, crypto and padding. And if we then look into the details, we see this is quick and hey, yes, indeed. It's a UDP packet. IP UDP. So for the network, it's just a UDP packet. But if we then look inside, we see, ah, okay, here we see frame one, the ACK, here frame two, and frame three. These are exactly the frames we saw up here. So our padding, crypto frame, acknowledgement frame. These are our three frames. And then we have the, the header, the header with the quick information. So there's packet length and uh, different, the header form, there are different formats, I didn't go into these details, etc., uh, etc. Et so please do have a look into how quick looks like, then you will understand what the differences are to TCP. So we'll come back to some questions. So what was the key motivation or the two motivations for Quick? And well, HTTP, even the newer version, why may this version be slowed down by TCP? And that's the rendering of the web pages. So this is a problem. Although, well, we have some improvements with HTTP 2, but still, what is the problem? Then I explained uh, the ossification of the transport layer. How is this handled by Quick? So how do we get around this? And why is connection set up faster? Always remember, Quick includes security. So why is it faster compared to TCP with TLS, for example? Then we had new terms, a Quick connection. What is a connection? What are packets? What are streams? What are frames? So what is the motivation for this structure? You could do it also in a complete different way. But so we have a structure of packet stream frame. Why? Then Quick is quite new, so there are still some open issues. And this may change over time, but what are still some open issues, especially with the infrastructure? And then when it comes to performance, Check literature. This changes over time. Compare quick with TCP. Who's the winner? In which situation? So what is the current situation and what may change over time? 